All right, so Milky Way wishes. This is the, well, there's this, and there's also Megaton Punch and Samurai Kirby. But let's let's take care of this one first, because I believe Solar likes something about this one. Hello. What was that? Sorry. <laughs> Did I cut out? No. no, you didn't cut out. I, I was answering a question in the chat, and I didn't want to interrupt you. Mm. All right, all right. Help, you must stop the sun and moon from fighting. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, so, no. They're, so it's they're, a they're... problem. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, really. No. There we go. Yeah, you got to stop the sun and the moon from fighting. Oh, so you gotta now go... they're go asking me, is this your first time playing Milky Way Wishes? No, it's not. Oh, wait. It's yeah, not? It no, wait, it you is. The... I was fixing to say, the fuck? All right, so let's see. You can't copy enemies' abilities in this game. Oh, You get something better instead. What the? That's it? I just go straight to the main campaign after that? Well, what the fuck do I do? Oh, wait. What the shit? Okay, so I, I, I think you hit A when you weren't supposed to, but that's okay. Either way, um... What happens in this is instead of copying enemies' abilities, what you have to do are find these special statues called Copy Essence Deluxes. And if you find those and you grab one of them, whatever ability is on that statue, you can access from any time at any point whatsoever Ow, without fuck. having to wait for them. Well, I just picked a random stage. I'm in a freaking volcano-like stage. Ew. The file one. Hellfire! Fuck. <laughs> Son of a no, I did not. I, I see you don't like my home. Go ahead. I see you don't like my home very much. <laughs> not when it burns off my dick. It burns, burns, burns. <laughs> this yeah, place really. Is so fucking hot. Yeah, really. Well, I was gonna say, just come to the lust circle, then, dear. It's not gonna get burnt off. Not bad. Oh my. Kinky. Ugh. And yes, to answer all your questions about the Thunderblight, I'm releasing an episode every Saturday. Ooh. There you go. I have a terrible craving for ice cream. Ooh, invincibility candy. Invincib invincibility candy is so fun. Apparently, these freaking carts can ride over lava. Make oh, sense. yeah, they can. <laughs> these carts are invincible to everything except for pitfalls. Damn so it. keep that I in mind. right into a fucking wall. Crap. Oh, and walls. Yeah. Uh... No, 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 no. Come on, get on there. Okay. Oh, oh get, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. No! Damn it. Get in the fucking cart. Get in the fucking cart and stop burning yourself. <laughs> I swear, Kirby, you're secretly a masochist. He's a ravenous cannibal that thrives on the blood of mass murder. God damn it. I okay. definitely didn't steal that line from Death Battle, by the way. Uh-huh. But serious, seriously, though, in terms of a Nintendo characters, Kirby is like one of the strongest characters. Okay, somebody said in re in response to this solar, so Kirby is Aeon? Fuck! <laughs> I prefer- I can vore people, there is- I think there are pictures of me voring other ponies, but, like, I'm usually the one who's usually bored. So I can vore. And I have for- and I have for some people, like, uh, Miha is a fun person to vore. Oh. Promo. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> Someone yeah. said Solar stop stealing from Death Battle. Well, why don't you fucking make me? God damn it. You piss off. There. Damn it. Oh. You're trying to make sense of a Kirby. Oh no, yeah, the Those guys are fucking. In a lot of other games, there are there are a lot more wacky shenanigans that go on. Like the time that Kirby Storm King D. The hell was cake. that? 
hashtag ask A on how many kinks do you have, my dude? That is a question that is immemorial as time itself. <laughs> I have a list and I'm not sure if I I'm not sure I have it fully sorted yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It as I got Solar. my ass burned. As Solar, did you see Last Death Battle Jack versus Afro? Yes, and I was pleased with the results. I mean, I haven't seen Afro Samurai, but come on, it's it's Samurai Jack, people. Can't really go wrong. <laughs> Not wait, wait, sure what this question it. is implying, but it says, ask Aeon what... Oh, wait a minute. Ask Aeon the Lust Circle a Discord server? What? No, no, no. no, no I was burned to the. I, the I think it's like the fifth of circle of hell in Dante's Inferno. Exactly. Oh. Ask Aeon, what would a fusion between MyOC, Holly Berry, and you be called? Uh, well, given the fact that I don't think any of us really know your OC or what it looks like, or Dreamberry about it, really, I mean, I guess. <laughs> uh, like, the problem is that, like, sometimes it's a portmanteau with a name, other times, uh, like, with me and Bliss, we knew each other enough that we could make a name based on shared character themes, so that's why our name isn't some weird shippy name, because some people, what they do is they do the shipping name idea technique, which is where they just, they use their shipping name as their... Fusion name, which uh, I prefer something more symbolically meaningful. That's why me and Bliss went with Euphoria rather than a portmanteau of our names. I mean, I prefer yeah, it too, I, honestly. Originally, I, I I kept thinking that a shipping name would be the way to go, and then I was like, you know, that's that sounds really generic now that I think about it. Well, so well I, I don't want to shit on the method because it can work, especially if you have compatible names. So if you have compatible names, then yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you really, sometimes you really don't. So it's like so um, sometimes you wind up with a fucking fusion named Death Steel Flowers or some shit like that. It's like what the, yeah. what <laughs> on what <laughs> planet do those go together? <laughs> so I'm guessing this trail Moonlight is supposed Shadow to... Blade or some shit like so that. I guess that trail that leads to the second planet is where I'm supposed to go next. You I can so. basically do these in any order that you choose. I mean, it's kind of a just a suggestion as to where you should go. By the way, um, you should really try exploring the levels because that's how you actually get your abilities in this game, in this game type. Ah, oh, great. And because I can't take any powers. See what what they do in this one, and the reason why I like it so much is instead of you just finding an enemy and having to rely on said enemy in order to get the powers. If you find the copy essence deluxe of that enemy, from that point on, you can uh, you can permanently just swap to that. You can swap to that power at any point. Damn it! So, so it's really fucking useful, especially if you find the hammer one. Uh, mm, beautiful. Beautiful, Clark. I see Kirby suck things up, spit it out, and I keep wanting to go bow. Yeah. Bow. 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 <laughs> bow, bow, bow. Oh, damn it. Why did I swallow it? <laughs> Ask all thoughts about Shut the up. preview. Shut up. Get your head out of the gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Ask all thoughts about the preview for the next death battle. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I actually I did death. not see that. I don't watch Death Battle that much. Sometimes their Death Battle ideas can be really stupid. Like, they have one where Twilight is fighting against one of those Teen Titan characters, and I thought, why do you need Raven. To... Yeah, it's like, you, you, why did you do that? Is it because they're the same voice actress? That was, honestly, I feel like that was the reason behind yeah, it. Yeah, only Raven because they're strong. Yeah, no, that is but stupid. It's such a lopsided battle, though, but so why? Jesus Christ, that got really loud. Ask well, I should point out. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to point out, it's like, I don't think the point of death battle is for it to make sense. It's sometimes for it to be fun. Like, for instance, epic rap battles, that was just made to be, like, that was just made for pure fun. Like, Charles Darwin versus Ass Ketchum, or, like, Wright Brothers versus the Mario Brothers. That shit's cool to me. It's fun. I mean, the, the, the main thing about death battle is it's just... It compares two fighters of a common theme, and then say who is better at that theme. 
Which is why I like. Then I'll enjoy one of those. But yeah, if I were to choose between epic rap battles and death battles, I would prefer epic rap battles because that's just pure fun. Well, yeah, and the other problem I have with any sort of death battle thing, even like the real, the real one, which had even less excuses to screw things up, is because, um, in in actuality, with most of these death battle situations, the person who wins is the person you wanted to win. Because ninety nine percent of the time, it's like, okay, you want Batman to fight Superman? Okay, well, so you can easily tell which side they want to win, not just because of who they declare the winner, but when they show their work, so to speak. Let me guess, they're going to pick the worst examples of Batman and the best examples of Superman. You know, the time Superman sneezed and he destroyed the solar system, not the time he slipped on a bar of soap and knocked himself out. <laughs> you know what I'm getting at? Battles, you yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, I can... Feel for yourself. I, 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 mean, I like, can justify Batman beating Superman because Batman is literally... No, yeah, yeah, like, I, I view it within the realm of possibility, but I'm not going to give a definitive conclusion when it comes to, like, say, um, one character from one universe versus another because there are usually too many variables to actually keep track of um, most of the time. So you can have an idea, but it's... Uh, but ultimately, you're going to pick the winner based on who you wanted to win rather than any objective information. Hell, even Deadliest Warrior had this issue because, well, first off, their, their way of testing the weapons was actually really, really fucking terrible. Or a terrible way of establishing which one was better based on one test and um, based on one test. And there were numerous errors that they made throughout the... Um, that they, that they would make throughout their episodes. And the people would point these out, and on top of that, there were some figures in their research team who were present on the show who lied about past military experience, which they used as leverage to say that they knew what they were doing. It... Come on, come on. Ugh. Like, I, I already know that whenever it comes to... Whenever it comes to, you know, the whole death battle stuff, you're always going to find those people who are going to be upset over who won. Um, well, no, no, no. I'm, what I'm saying is, um, yeah, you're going to have some of those people, but you can't just put that on them when in, act when in actuality. The real reason why, you, if you say that, oh, no, no, this is accurate, stop complaining or whining that you lost, let's be honest, it's because you wanted the guy to win. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. That's that's ultimately it. And But when you're picking a winner, it when you're doing the death battle and you pick a winner... You're, let's be honest, basing it off of who you wanted to win. You're not doing it on an objective metric. You're just having a fanboy micro penis measuring contest. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best analogy to give an example to. <laughs> you know, the only death battle that I remember where people didn't bitch about the outcome was uh, Fox McCloud versus Bucky O'Hare because nobody really knew Bucky. So they're like, yeah, okay, Fox won. I, I can see that. I don't that. remember people bitching about Flash versus, um, what's his name, Silver? Quicksilver. Quicksilver. Quicksilver, yeah. yeah. That's like, Flash is. Like, Flash is fucking broken. Or, like, let's be yeah. honest. He, he's like he, Quicksilver is like the only one of the only Marvel characters that's not broken. Uh, like Marvel characters, like the the reason that people tend to go for Marvel characters is more of the aesthetic as they made themselves the hero. As damn it, where, whereas DC is kind of just like, well, they were already there. They're just you can't really go much higher than that. Mm. Flash is one of those characters, though, in the DC verse that has like managed to consistently fucking push that boundary. Like the time he's like, "Oh yeah, I can beat you back to Earth, and you can teleport," but I I did it anyways, just cause. Oh, also by the way, Goldie, uh, hit the pause button. Okay. Really quick. Yeah. Hang on. This, this stream has to catch up. Oh, uh, did it freeze again? No, nah, it shouldn't have. It's either the pause button or the select button, either or. Yeah, so the pause button just pauses it. Um, hit whatever key you have set to select. Damn it, I missed. Oh shit. <sighs> so those abilities that you found earlier, you can now access those at any okay, time. Okay, that is awesome. 
that is why I like Milky Way wishes so much because you can just at any time you can swap to any of the abilities that you found. And if you drop one or if you die or anything like that, you can just get it right back. You can also use it to make partners. There's literally no repercussions to it whatsoever. So. Ha. Tapaka tapaka. Yeah, and in the DS version, it was even better because the DS version, you could just use the touch screen whenever you hit pause and just fucking, they're all there on a grid. Uh, you know, Lots could, of fun. I could just imagine at one point getting a good capture card and... Son of a bitch! Like, at one point, because I would love to do a stream of um, the uh, Crystal Shards, because I loved that game when I was a kid. Oh, Crystal Shards was so much fun! It also had one of the most badass copy abilities, so... A more like two. <laughs> it had- it had several, actually. It had the fucking- it had the fucking fire sword, it had the Darth Maul lightsaber. And it, and it also had the fucking, uh... It also had the fucking crystal shard gun. That shit was really cool. <laughs> Ask Blissey, I'm thinking of the name of our OC Fusion. Oh, you you have fun with that, Jess. <laughs> you, uh, admit, you, you, you do that there. I, I admit that, no, 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 she and I, she and I are pretty good. We're, we're, we're cool. We're good friends. We, we met at Nightmare Nights, we hung out. Ooh. She's got a sweet little girl, uh, named That's Nicole. That's adorable. Her birthday's gonna be soon. Happy birthday to her, by the way. That's awesome. I admit, I admit, though, the idea of people, like, uh, like, no fits to the chat or anything. Random strangers saying, hey, I want to fuse with your OC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I want to insert myself inside of you. Yeah, when you put it that way, that was my point. <laughs> <laughs> Removing those mental images from my head. <laughs> I mean, the idea... Like, I, I know that there's not really anything that's innately sexual about it, so I'm not going to, like, say it like it is, but there no. is a degree... There um, is a degree I, of, of trust. intimacy that goes into it. Well, Ow. Ow. Like, and when I say when I say intimacy, I don't mean like oh, you know, I have sexual feelings. Okay, for well, this well, person. let me let me say this: when Aeon and I came up with the idea of Euphoria after we were inspired by a fan art piece, <laughs> a level of trust went into making her. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what I mean when I say yeah. intimacy. I, I yeah, mean it more no. along the lines of you have that, yeah, like, I would, I would never want, I would like to think me as a person, and this extends to my persona, I would never fuse with someone unless I felt a trustworthy connection with them. There you go. So, no, 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 yeah. no, 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 to say no, no, I trust no. Golden Fox with fusing, yes, I would. But I trust Keyframe, of course. Solar, surprisingly, yes. Hey. Hey. Random strangers on the internet. Sorry. Probably not. This Probably ass not. Is up. Get up. Get out of my way. No. Oh God. <laughs> Plus, again, months of work and talking and thinking about it really hard went into Euphoria, so Son I wouldn't want to just just throw one come together. up with a fusion all and just throw it together last second. You know, I like to put effort. It's into a fun it. process. Yeah, it's a fun process to like but think about it, like, put effort in. Yeah, it is a process, like, but it's fun. <laughs> It's the design to visual cues, and then you a lot of discussion just goes into the visual cues. A lot of discussion goes into okay, what gender is it going to be? A lot of discussion goes into a lot more discussion goes into the personality that it would have. Thankfully, it's really easy if you have two characters of the same gender, but you know, shit. Oh, so that's what you're supposed to do. Jesus, well, get in the door. There Ironically, I'm drawing Euphoria right now because I'm trying to come up with a new poster design idea. <laughs> Just draw one with the ass wiggle. No, well, I have Lightning Bliss and Aeon in the foreground. Like, Bliss is, looks just really happy. Aeon looks smirky as usual, and Euphoria is sitting down looking very royal. Looking regal. She's very regal. <laughs> She's very self assured of herself. 
I love it. That's what I love about her. I want to be her. Fuck this breeze. There we go. Well, I mean, like, that's another thing, too, is that you have to factor... Another, a cool thing to factor in is, like, the wish... The desires of both, um, both fusion components. You put them together and then manifest that in a personality trait in the fusion. That's another aspect, dimension to its personality. As opposed to just saying, oh, I like pizza and you like pasta. Or fusion likes Italian food. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's just... The main thing about a fusion is, well, you know... I, I know we kind of already got off the topic, but it's kind of like death battle. You're trying to find that common theme. And that's well, really the key to, you know, building a character around that. Because please. sometimes people make fusions that make no damn sense. They have characters that are entirely incompatible, both personality-wise or, hell, sometimes even race-wise. So. Well, you want to know the interesting thing about Euphoria, though? Yeah, hmm. she has the personality traits of what makes Aeon and Bliss, but she takes that and makes it her own. Exactly. And she becomes thing. her own individual. That's what makes her unique. So it's not Aeon and Bliss. It's Euphoria. You, it just took Aeon and Bliss to create her. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, if you ever want to do, like, a serious fusion, like, Damn especially it. if we're going by, like, the Steven Universe aspect of it all... This is my series. You can't space. think of it as two personalities trying to mash together so one personality reacts and the other one doesn't and vice versa. No, it becomes its own character. How the hell did we make that work is beyond me. We're just that good of friends. <laughs> well, that's the thing about it. Like like I said, there is a level of intimacy that is involved. Like we're it's almost to the point where you can almost finish each other's thoughts. And I think once you hit that point, then it would make sense to, uh, you know, have a fusion. Because at that point, hell, yeah. you're practically there already, so you might as well go all the way. Yeah, there's another thing, too, is that, like, we established in a way that there are stages of it. Because I mentioned that Euphoria is, like, all three components, like, are in completely enmeshed and synergized. But I would say, um, so it's just for... Take them shits and giggles. Let's call Euphoria like a level three fusion. So mind, body, spirit are all one. Uh, level one fusion is only the body is one, but you guys are controlling the inside kind of Pacific Rim style. Um, yeah. In uh, a, maybe level, maybe like a level two one is like you you have two minds, but the mind might have conflicting desires or contradictory personality points if you don't mesh. And number three is like everything is enmeshed and syner synergized and synchronized. I mean, I think I know I know it never actually happened in Aragon, but in, if you read the Aragon books, I think that actually covered the concept pretty well. Because what ended up happening is in the Aragon universe, you have dragon riders, and you obviously have you know the the riders, and you have the dragons. And the thing about the dragon riders is that they have this mental connection to their dragon that grows over time. And like eventually at one point they uh like they're flying and Aragon is trying to see something and so his dragon named Sephira like lends the use of her eyes to him. Yeah. And like it, it goes it goes into it so far as to say that eventually he just he's not able to tell who's who anymore. They're just one at that point. Like, he, he, he knows that he's seeing through her eyes, but he's unable to tell where his mind ends and hers begins because they're essentially just one at that point. That's, that's, that's messed up. What? Just that, that whole being one thing and not being able to tell who's the individual. Well, it's not like a bad thing. It's like they're both consciously aware of what they're doing. And because they're so they're both doing that same thing. They're just like, I don't know who's me and I don't know who's you. We're just one right now. I but mean, I, I guess I, it's a good thing, but I don't know. Yeah. I guess it's confusing. I think, it, I think it would be an interesting story to have in a special at some time. Like, two people who had to fuse out of necessity, but, like, they are not compatible, so maybe they only do, like, a, like a level one style fusion, but immediately after, the fusion, like, blows to pieces because it like, it had the talents necessary to, like, stop whoever the villain was, but obviously it wasn't stable enough to stay together, so it blew, 
So just at the end of it, it just like sort of kneels over and blows to pieces. Or well, it's breaks funny back that you the... mentioned that too. <laughs> yeah, but that could be a dramatic thing because that can also raise tension. Like, you know, the fusion only has a set amount of time before it destabilizes and separates. One second. I love her mane. Oh my god. Sorry, that was random. <laughs> I do too. So we can pick when you're done. I really I like her mane. Yeah, he saw what I was referencing! Ah! <laughs> I think everybody here saw what you were referencing. We just kind of didn't want to play <laughs> it. Didn't want to it. Out of... <laughs> it was out of nowhere. Hey, Blissey? Yes. So maybe we want to try with some of the Euphoria poses. Is instead of Aeon smirking, what if he's just smiling a bit more innocently? Oh, he does you feel... like the more sympathetic smiles? Yeah, at least, especially with Euphoria, because that does evoke more of that sensation in Aeon than him, than me being cocky as usual. That's fair. I, I would like to, yeah, I'll, I'll use more of those for sure. I know she used a lot of, uh, quite a few, well, not a lot, but uh, quite a few of those in the, the Christmas special. Like, there's certain emotions I don't think I've ever seen Aeon do, and like, like, like she was legitimately nervous, like at the part where... Um, I guess they were talking about Aeon specifically, and and her resp her immediate reaction was nervousness, and and she's like, oh, why is that? And I can't tell if that was Bliss's personality popping out or his. Well, that's the point of a good fusion, dear. You're not supposed to be able to tell. Exactly. Kinda. And and I love that about her, and because that's not an expression I would normally see in you. Just, just being nervous about what people thought of you. Because I'm like that all the time. I have social anxiety. So do I. I'm just... Oh, you're you might say I'm better at yeah, writing I'm, it. Yeah, I'm, be I'm, better at ex I'm better at accepting it and trying to let it pass. Uh, but it is there. I learned something new about Aeon. The more you know. And knowing's half the battle. G.I. Joe. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> are you proud of yourself? Yes. We both yeah, are. <laughs> Everywhere you look, da da da, no, da go to hell! <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get you, you know that, right? Kinky. Hey, Screw this. So, I'm gonna so... I'm gonna plan a flight in September and I'm gonna come over there and shove you over so hard. So, how about that, uh, that, uh, that friendship full house reference? Now I'm gonna yeah, kill Jesus you. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you're just digging a hole now. Yeah, yeah Golden. Golden. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, I think you're running the joke a bit into the ground there, dearie. <laughs> it's funny because he just picked up the jet ability, which does the opposite. Should I make her horn longer? Nah, no, 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 that's a good size. <laughs> Oh, for the love of God, get your head out of the gutter! <laughs> God damn it, Solar! I didn't even have to say it. She no, already you didn't knew. Have to. I know, I know how you think. <laughs> she already knew. I heard uh, you smirking. I'm not deaf. You heard me smirking. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, you hear that, everybody? She heard the muscles on my face contorting into a smile. <sighs> Aeon, uh, can you curse him? Please! Uh, well, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a- <laughs> So, um, some- Okay, so, some groceries are arrived, and, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call this an episode. I'm gonna take a short little break and help out with groceries, and then I'll come back and record another episode. Yeah.